We are in section 6.3, Sampling Distributions and Estimators, so we now can consider the concept of sampling distributions of a statistic. Instead of working with values from an original population, we want to focus on the values of a statistic, such as sample proportion, sample mean, um, it could be sample standard deviation also, but those are the two, sample proportion and sample mean that we use the most. Um, when samples of the same size are taken from the same population, the following two um, properties apply. So sample proportions tend to be normally distributed, and the mean of sampling proportions is the same as the population mean. So I'm going to let you guys kind of look through this on your own. There's a couple things. There's not much in this section, just a couple things along the lines of notation. First one is the sampling distribution of a sample proportion. Is the distribution of a sample proportion or the distribution of the variable p hat with all samples having the same sample size n taken from the same population? So notation this is what you guys need to know. So P is the population proportion and P hat is the sample proportion. Likewise down here we have the sampling distribution of the sample mean. And the sample mean says is the distribution of all possible sample means or the distribution of the variable X bar with all samples having the same sample size in taken from the same population. Again, the notation is what I want you guys to really get out of this and say mu is the population mean and x bar is the sample mean, and we have seen that notation before. Again, the rest of it I'll let you guys kind of read through on your own. And then we're moving into 6.4. 6.4 is the central limit theorem. In previous sections, we saw that sampling distributions of sample means tend to be normally distributed as sample size increases. Given any population with any distribution, uniform, skewed, etc., the distribution of the sample mean x bar can approxim be approximated by a normal distribution when the samples are large enough. So the idea of the sample being large enough, our magic number here, is our sample size has to be larger than 30. So the central limit theorem, it says pretty much no matter what is going on with the, our distribution, the more data that we collect, the more that our graph is going to become looking normal. You guys can look at there's four graphs there, A, B, C, and D. And you can see that in B, the sample size is 15, and C, the sample size is 30, and in D, the sample size is 60. So as they're collecting more information, you'll notice that that histogram is starting to look more like that normal bell-shaped curve that's, that's sketched on there also. Central limit theorem and sampling distribution of x bar. Suppose that a simple random sample size n is drawn from a population with mean mu and a standard deviation sigma. If the population has a normal distribution or n is greater than 30, then the sampling distribution of x bar has a mean and a standard deviation that are given by, and there's some formulas there that we should know. And also, the other thing that's on here is that if it's normally distributed, or if our sample's large enough, which means it's greater than 30, that means that it's approximately normal, which means that we can use normal PDF and normal CDF with our calculators. And the sample, the mean of our random variable x bar is going to be equal to mu. And sigma of our mean is sigma divided by the square root of n. This is the big part here that you guys need to know. Because the mean is the same thing. It's the standard deviation that changes. And it says if the original population is not normally distributed and n is less than or equal to 30, then the distribution of x bar cannot be approximated well by normal distribution and the methods discussed above cannot be used. So we have an example here and the first thing on here says based on the test of a, the Chevrolet Cobalt engineers have found that the miles per gallon in highway driving are normally distributed. So they flat out tell us it's normally distributed. 
with a mean at 32 miles per gallon and a standard deviation of 3.5 miles per gallon. So part A says what is the probability that a randomly selected cobalt gets more than 35 miles to the gallon. So that it gets more than would be greater than 34 miles to the gallon. And since it says it's normally distributed, we're going to go ahead and use normal CDF. And with normal CDF, it starts with the lower bound, which here is 34. And again, if it helps to draw a bell-shaped curve, do that. And it goes on forever, so that's 1E99. E Remember, that's the E that's right above the comma. And then our mean, which is 32, and our standard deviation, which is 3.5. Close your parentheses, hit enter. And working this out, we would get a probability, we're going to round it four decimal places. So we get 0 0.2839. And then I want you guys to go on and read part B. Part B looks almost identical to part A. It says that the cobalts are selected, and it says what is the probability that the mean miles per gallon exceeds 34 miles per gallon. It looks almost identical, except for this time it's asking for the mean miles per gallon. It did not say that up there. If you look at A, it says just more than 34. And the other thing too is that it tells us that we have 10 cobalts. And since we're sampling, this is our mean, we are going to be dealing with finding the probability that the mean miles per gallon, and we show that by saying x bar is greater than 34. And again, we can still use normal CDF. And it's going to start with that lower bound, which is 34, comma, goes on forever, 1E, 99, comma, the mean which same problem, the mean for the Chevy Cobalt is 32 miles per gallon, comma, your standard deviation. Now, since I'm dealing with a sample here, I want you guys to look up at what we had before, and it says the standard deviation is going to be sigma divided by the square root of n. So sigma is 3.5. Divided by the square root of n, and n is our sample size, which is 10. Close parentheses, hit enter, and I get 0 0.0354. So looking at the difference between those two, part A and part B, part C says 20 cobalts are randomly selected and the miles per gallon for each car are recorded. What is the probability that the mean miles per gallon exceeds 34 miles per gallon, and again, it has that mean miles per gallon. And then there's a second question here about it being significantly high. So this is identical to what we did in part B. However, this time we have a sample size of 20. So the probability that X bar is greater than 34 is equal to normal CDF. Starts at 34, goes on forever to the right, so 1E, 99. That means 32. Your standard deviation is 3.5. Divided by the square root of our sample, which is 20 this time. Closing your parentheses and selecting enter or paste. And rounding this four decimal places, I get 0 0.0053. The second question on here says, would this result be significantly high? Yes. And the reason why is because the probability of it being more than 34 miles per, per gallon is really small. The probability of that happening is 0 0.0053. So yes, this is significantly high. 
And the reason why is because the probability is less is less than 0 0.05.